Uh, good evening. Welcome to the um, August 31st, 2015 meeting of the Open Space Committee. Um, hopefully we'll have some more members in a couple minutes. In any event, I'm going to call the meeting to order at, at uh, 6.25 on my watch. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, under discussion items, um, the first thing I had listed was to initiate the um, priority, initiate the review of the of the parcels. And I noticed, Matt, you left us the largest ones on top, the ones over 20 acres? Yes. So are you kind of thinking we should look at the 20 acre ones first? Uh, not sure yet, Madam Chair. Uh, there was a lot of data here. This was an all day project today. Oh my God. Uh, I did get a chance to look at all 181 of these. <laughs> and get an idea of what they are, what some of the small ones are, what some of the large ones are. And we're able to eliminate a few of these right off the bat because they're owned by the water district. I was gonna say, yes, all the pink ones, right? Yes, so those were, on a future version of this file, I will omit those. Yes. I just wanted you to see them yep. on this one. Yeah, I was surprised, there's quite a few. Yes, so and some of the others, the ones that are in blue, those are confirmed wetlands, some of them are just straight ponds. One of them is Eddie Pond, Laysville Pond, Pondville Pond, and then there's others that are yeah. parcels within floodplains that are just too wet to consider, landlocked, et cetera, et cetera. So now you have Cedar Street on here. Is that part of that's part of the Eddie Pond parcel? Yes, it, it's separate, but yeah, it's contiguous. It's adjacent to it. There's a that's a large parcel across Cedar Street, but it's part of the same Eddie Pond network of water right. system. And from what I understand, it's it's a cedar swamp, and it's pretty precarious to get through there. It is. And some of our longtime older board members, when I was first here, the ones that had been on for years and years, told me not to go there unless you knew, unless you knew your way around mm -hmm. in there, because you could disappear. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. There must be people. There must be somebody around in town that's familiar with it. Have you ever been in there? I have. You have? I have. And you live to tell about it. <laughs> <laughs> what's no. a, what's, what is, is it as? It's marsh. There's a very slim strip closest to Cedar Street, but you couldn't put anything there that's not a shed. Right. Or a monument. It's just like a walk, it's like a pathway to get into the yes. swamplands? Yeah, a, a formidable notice of intent would have to be filed. <laughs> and you wouldn't have enough area to replicate. <laughs> If you wanted to build anything on that, so uh, the Cedar Street. Those are those definite me, open space places we'll be keeping the yes, way they are. I would imagine so. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if this property had a conservation restriction, but further analysis through the deeds would be required if the, if necessary. But having been on site, I, I don't see it. <laughs> but, I'm not uh, sure if it has a restriction or not. It sh like you said, it probably it should. It every. Doesn't. Madam Chair, every property on here could have a deed restriction. Uh, some of them do that I've, uh, and the assessors, so Cindy Cosgrove has been kind enough to look into for me. Um, but furthermore, on this document, this table, some of the items in green I highlighted because they had certain characteristics that might be interesting to us. In what way? Uh, they were conforming lots, they have street frontage. Most frontage being the big thing. So you mean they might be marketable? Mm hmm Conforming lots with street frontage, okay. Mm hmm Now on this first sheet, these are pretty sizable parcels because you've got over 20. Some of them are. The, uh, I don't know if this one was still green for you. Okay, good. I took that one off your sheet. But the first one is that Gilbert Stockwell property. Yeah. Those two two parcels. If we had the imagery, we'll be able to look at them a little better, but I printed out some some photos for the members that show the, at least the over aerial of the parcel. This is off of Barn Street. Yeah. I think this has been examined in the past. It's a lot of grade. It's a lot of walking trails. Yeah. I think, and I think this was given to conservation it years is. ago. This one does have a deed restriction. Conservation. Both of them. The two parcels? Yes. But there, further analysis could be done to see if there's any restriction on passive recreation use. Mm -hmm. So, to be considered, I suppose. 
I kindly omitted some of the Granger Cliffs properties. I think we've, at least I've noticed the town has looked into these on many different occasions. I'm sure they could be looked at again at some point. I'm sure we'll go through everything on this list, but for the sake of today's meeting, I kept that one off. <laughs> If you turn the page of the photos, I found an interesting property on here. The it's, second one? Yes. It is between 448 and 450 Leicester Street. It is a 25-acre parcel owned by the town. It has 140 feet of frontage. Is, is that where they wanted to build all those houses? It's no. farther south from that. It's closer to the New England Power easement. And there's a considerable amount of wetlands on this site, but it's a large parcel of land that has street frontage. And well, that's interesting. It was very interesting. <laughs> the grades also appear to be... Not too steep? Well, it looks like there's a, lot, there's a, a few sections of some steep grade. It looks like there's a hill in the middle and then it drops yeah. off. And then it, it comes up and comes down. Mm -hmm. and then in the, in the back, at the top. Mm -hmm. Of course, the issue with that is that um, Leicester Street and Rochdale Street, it's always been town services being an issue out there. Yes. This is a, I'll note that the frontage out in Leicester Street is also the same as the New England Power easement. Hmm. How many house lots could that? What's the, what's the do you know the zoning acreage size for there? This one? I don't know the zone offhand, I'm sorry. So it could be like two acres? It could be between a requirement of 20,000 or it could be 60,000. But if it needs its own private septic, it's 80,000, I believe, at maximum, per lot. Do you know what the frontage is? If it's 60,000 square feet, that's an acre and a half? 180 right? feet. 180? Yeah. Oh. Which it doesn't have. But again, that's if this is residential or rural. I don't have that information today. And we could do a further analysis on this. I just really wanted to sort this table for the members, uh, point out a couple of highlights, and accept any of the, of the committee's feedback as to how to further sort this table so we can get closer to the focus of the committee and the parcels you'd like to pay more attention to. Well, given that this has um, road frontage, were you thinking like keeping this in mind for marketable down the road? I think this town services ever became available out there? I think this parcel needs a little more homework. It's, okay. It has a pinch point where it's very narrow. Uh, that oh, might, right. Is that that right there? It might be the wetlands crossing. Uh, there's there's a lot of analysis of that to go into this parcel, but I'm not sure it's ever been done, so it couldn't hurt. Well, it's, it's kind of an odd shape with very. a bite out of it there. It's very peculiar that it's so long and narrow. Mm -hmm. to the house in front there. Which one? This this right here? Yeah, it must belong to that lot it's down there. That lot. Belong to that belong to that house lot down there? That lot? This no, it's no. the the indentation of that lot's part of a much larger parcel to the north owned by oh. a, uh, owned, uh, owned by a private trust. This this goes with this. Yes. It doesn't go with the house lot. Oh. See the you know, he's, okay. yeah, see right there? Yes, I understand. Okay. And that's all vacant too. Mm -hmm. But privately owned. But privately owned. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right, so do you want to go on is the next one on this? Sure. John, we're on the, um, the third page on the um, illustrations that he provided. I figured that out, thank you. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. So this is off South Street. The town owns two parcels adjacent to each other for a total of 21.4 acres. This is north of the boat ramp, but it's two properties that were taken by tax title. Oh. And these are upland for the most part. Some, I'm sure, vernal pool wetlands. This is still in the Eddie, Eddie Pond floodplain in a way. Yep. But plenty of frontage, plenty of acreage. This is a, seems to be a very marketable piece of land. But 
it may have deed restrictions as well. It just needs to be. Well, I'll take my title. I guess not. Sorry. No, probably not. <laughs> That's right. Was it recently acquired by tax title? Uh, I had a note on this. 1981. Oh. And 1982. I'm surprised the town wouldn't put that like on the market now. It's buildable lots. Mm -hmm. That's what we were just thinking about. Rock and roll acts. Why did I ever see them? Yeah, it's across from the road for the Potter Farms subdivision. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Definitely something to keep in mind. I don't know what the zoning is there. I think that's I think that's a sixty thousand square foot lot too. I believe so. So 180 for frontage, you said. Yeah, I actually have a sheet on these. <laughs> yes, residential rural, 180 feet of frontage, 60,000 square foot lot. Okay. Now, are there, are there homes on these properties? No, they are vacant. They're vacant, they're yeah. vacant, vacant. Hmm. So, I'll go through these kind of quick, just so okay. we get through it. Uh, these were just examples, because we don't have the screen, and then we can go through them one at a time using the screen at our next meetings. Yep. And, and, and okay, so Oxford Street South? Yeah, this one I actually learned a little more about. and <laughs> Would probably not have provided this one to the committee. This is mostly a grade in a wet area. <laughs> so this was uh, another tax title that I don't think is buildable no, any longer. <laughs> so I'm gonna skip that one. And then this one got pretty interesting. So this is 295 Leicester Street. Okay. It is a five and a half acre parcel that consists of mostly walking trails right now. This was deeded to the town, I forget the year, but it was by the New England Power, the electric company, with the restriction that the utility company still be able to access it as needed. But there's doesn't seem to be any easement on this property. Whether or not the high tension wires were relocated at some point since this deed, but there's nothing there. So there's no easement at all? That, that neither I nor the assessor could tell. Apparently there were a lot of easements that were never formally recorded around town that's been discovered in recent years. Mm. So perhaps that's one of those on the mill. Well, chances, uh, there's no, certainly no overhead wires here and there's very unlikely there's anything on the ground. So. So five and a half acres. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then the next one, I think this was visited by the town at some point. This is 40 Arrowhead Avenue. This is off, uh, off Central Street, off Mount View Ave, yeah. and then Arrowhead, kind of behind the mall over the highway. <laughs> there's some land that's vacant that the yeah. town owns, and there's two contiguous parcels totaling 3.2 acres, give or take. There's some grade here, but to me, this looks like uh, it's at the end of a dead end street, a uh, uh, future cul de sac with lots. It, it seems like that kind of development that could be made available. But I, I think some more homework needs to go into this for its deed restrictions. Do you think that? Um do you think this might have been an open space? No, they probably didn't have open space development projects back then. Because I was wondering if maybe that, because there's a lot of houses packed into you know small areas. Right. Yeah, this could be entirely a, a surface wetland. It, the homework's not in it yet. It's just we're just looking at the area and the the zoning conformance for now until I can dig deeper into it for the committee's recommendation. The next one is on the tail end of South Street. You have two parcels side by side that, if combined, would could create a conforming lot. Each lot it, on its own does, does not. 
this may still require a variance for frontage. You need 180 feet, but the lot size combined meets the 60,000 requirement. Could be something that the town could, in theory, apply for a variance and get it, and then sell the lot with the variance. But how much frontage does it have? Is it's it? just under on both sides. I think it's 160 on one side and. Slightly less on the other. Not very close. Mm -hmm. The only other option would be is if you could acquire some land that's front it's around the front edge and you really can't. It doesn't look like there's mm -hmm. enough room. But if a if the town did pursue a variance here and was granted it, it would stay with the land and and right, could be marketed. Perpetuity. Right. So the last two are kind of examples of things we can do nothing with. <laughs> I think, uh, actually, not yet. This is this one's still a good one. This is 199 Packachuck Street. This is right in front of Packachuck Church. It's a single-family house lot with a deed restriction on it for a single-family house lot, and we own it. And there's no house on it. Oh, how odd. Yeah. I wonder how we came to acquire that. Is that Tax not, title. Is that not wetland in there? Not sure. That's just all the VIU. No, this is just some wooded area in front of the Pekachug Church that in front of the uh, Pappas Rec Complex. Oh, okay. I'm thinking the other church. Hmm? I'm thinking, okay. Yeah, it's a half-acre lot. Oh, yeah. Is it across the street? No, it's it's right in front of it. Front. Right. This is just some open oh, land with some trees. There. Pretty hilly there. It's right it? across from... Yeah, it is pretty hilly. High Lawn, High Lawn Drive. Yeah. Island Drive? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? There's a wetland there. It, it's possible. I just... Zoning there's conformance huge, is there. I think I think that that's where there's a there's a huge culvert there. I think that does the drainage off of Packachuck Street. Okay. And goes down, dumps into the wetland way down at the end. Hmm. My memory serves me right. Oh, I can find out. Yeah, look at the sewer. Oh, so just, is that part of what was the wet meadow before the yes. church was built in there? That's still part of sure. the wet meadow, I think. Mm-hmm. So that could be looked at further. And these next two are just unique. I could, have, I could have provided some more unique examples, but these ones actually are just out of reach. Uh, oh, these are those tiny ones. Yeah, this is one of them. This one's a quarter acre lot. It's it's an island in the middle of three roads oh, with trees on it. Uh, Harvard Drive, White Oak Street, and I can't tell what that other road. I think it's Eastford Road. And the town owns an island in the middle with trees on it. Hmm. I just, just, just can't do anything with this other than a monument or a fountain, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> but it's just an example of some of the lots we have. And then on the next page, this one's on the border of Worcester. It's a non-conforming lot off of Dixon Avenue. It doesn't meet frontage, it doesn't meet lot size. And the town just kind of owns it through tax title. So there's several of those. <laughs> There's many lots that are a hundredth of an acre through, sprinkled throughout town that are just the victim of A&Rs over the years before the formal approval process, and most of them, uh, there's not much you can do with. Now, when you have a non-conforming lot, mm -hmm. it already was a non-conforming lot. We took it for tax title, right? Mm -hmm. So that means it was, was, did someone have a home there? Before? Unlikely. It was probably carved off. It might have the rest of the lot in Worcester, and then they just oh, dumped oh, the rest oh. of the lot in Auburn. Okay. So maybe the people just that they didn't pay the taxes on it, so the town took it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And there's really you can't you can't market obviously a non-conforming lot, right? Now what? Just for the sake of our from my own knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you had a non-conforming lot that had a house on it, but it had always been, it was just a non-conforming lot, mm -hmm. if that property somehow um, went up for sale or if the town took it by tax title, mm -hmm. if it already had a house on it, it was a non-conforming lot, could you sell it? Yeah, Duh. Uh, so long as the house is still there. Yeah. Is that one of those things that you could take down the house and rebuild it on the same foundation? Leaving up a wall while yeah, you do it, yes. a wall at a time? Yes. That's one of those things that you could do? Yes. Okay. All right. But there is no house there. That's right. <laughs> okay. So this was just some examples for the committee's recommendation. 
and sorted the data as you can see here. There's also a separate page for just the 20 plus acre parcels. I plan to sort this a little more in depth, pull out the water district properties we won't be looking at. And just to read the key across the top, that item LL stands for landlocked. Um. So it helps well understand what has road frontage and what doesn't. But I, I recommend that at our next meeting, I'd recommend that we are able to go through these in the planning board room using the software item at a time, kind of like I did today. <laughs> this way the committee gets to see the lots right. for where they are and what they are, because the numbers in the paper just isn't going to do us enough. Now, the ones that you left white, mm -hmm. what are those? They're other ones we can look at. I just focused kind of on the green ones because they had conformance with zoning. Okay. So the green ones, tell me if, if, you're, if I'm speculating too much. Are those the ones that you think might be marketable? I think so. The green ones? Okay. Yeah, and this is without the homework in advance to find out if they're full of wetlands yeah. or if there's some other outstanding deed restriction on it. Okay. Well, it's quite a few. I mean, it could be marketable. There are. I, I have to admit that this would take a few meetings to go through this list, uh, presenting them on the screen so we can see them one at a time. Yeah, what they look like. But it, it would be very useful. So are you suggesting that perhaps we start looking at screens on the green ones? And Eric and I... Oh, Maybe Eric at some time, and maybe me, but we'd be able to do that for you in the planning board room quite easily, pulling the lots up on the people GIS. Yep. To, uh, so if we started with the green ones, thinking about marketing those, mm -hmm. and then that would take them out of the equation, if that's what we recommended to the selectmen. Sure. Sure. There, there are some others on here that you, you may see as, as marketable as well. I didn't put the landfill in green. I mean, that's, that's our largest town-owned parcel. I didn't put that on here because I know we have a cap on the landfill and there's just nothing we can do right now. There's some others on here. Uh, Lemansky Park was on here. I didn't put that in green because we know that's Lemansky Park. Yeah. <laughs> um, technically, it doesn't have a structure on it because we don't own the skating rink. True. The now, will the landfill become available at any time in the future, or is that just... It could. How long does it take for... I'd have to confer with the town engineer. I'm not exactly sure. Thank you. You need money to you need money to run it to do it over. Yeah, is it? It might be 30 years or something, and then it has to pass tests throughout. You know, it's cap life or something. Do you, do if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I believe the 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 cap on the landfill has been consistently maintained by the DPW, and. If the town were to pursue certain permits through, um, I believe it's the Department of Environmental Protection, mm -hmm. then the property could be reused for certain uses. There, there's restricted uses that you know um, the town could pursue, but it's a Not permit. Build a, house a, per on it. a permit? No. 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 When, wouldn't be usable for for business or for uh -huh. okay. for living. Um, Wasn't there some talk? Well, you, I mean, I know you have. This isn't a fair question because you haven't lived here that long or been here. But I believe that there was some interest several years ago in using it for some sort of like soccer fields or something like that. Is that something that could be done on top of a landfill at some point? I'm not, yeah, I'm, we have to look into that. And further down the road when mm -hmm. methane gas is expelled. Yeah. Right. We've been approached by solar developers yeah. for that site, really? at least by the phone. They haven't gone too much farther than that. Once we tell them there's still a cap, mm -hmm. they kind of go away. But that's, and that's, that's a one popular, of them. It's a popular trend across the state. Yeah. The reuse of land, cap Everywhere. landfills yeah. for for solar farms. Yeah, they have, solar developers have an initiative to seek out those properties. Oh, to seek out, specifically to seek out capped landfills? Mm hmm Okay. Do you know how long the cap, how do, do you know how long it's been? I don't remember what I year ours was capped. Unfortunately, I do not. 
big dump are? I know it was operating when I was born. So I thought the dump was closed. It, it, within the last 32 years, it was closed. It was closed like 87, around there. I was going to say, I moved here in 88, and it was closed then. Uh, 87 but I don't know closed. if the cap was put on in 88. Uh, yeah, oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah. So you said you said you think it's 30 years before you can... We'll get some more information on that for next meeting. That would be a good idea. When time goes by, it's like we're closing in on that. <laughs> mm. Interesting. But there are some other parcels on here that I, I just didn't highlight right away. I mean, the, yep. the sand pits behind the Auburn Sportsman's Club, that's a ton of property. That's just... That's why I think there's plenty on here for us to go down one line, line by line. But isn't that protected by the well? It's possible. Yeah, there <laughs> I don't know a, much about those properties. There is a well field over there, but um, you know what else is over there, too, is the Sportsman's Club. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Fine range. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. I couldn't, had a momentary lapse. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where it is in proximity. It's kind of scary to you hear know, all those shots, but. If I'm correct, the, uh, at the Sportsman's Club, the, what you refer to as the sand pit, I think that's where the rifle range is. It's on, you know, the far, it, if you think about their pond, it's on the opposite side from their from their clubhouse. Mm -hmm. and it's quite a ways in the woods, but yeah. there's a lot, of, there is a lot of land up there. There is. I don't know what they own. I assume they own that all. I, yeah, the... There's two very large parcels. <laughs> yeah. So the sand pits are where the um, having the ranges. Such, there's bird banding that goes on there, and that's what I participated in. Mm -hmm. and okay. I, I we, we have times when we absolutely cannot be there because the rifle range or the pistol range are open. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in that area behind there is very sandy. It looks like it might have been a worked sand pit at one time. I, I don't know of any other. Um, similar property in that area. Well, something to look into, like you said. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Some of these we can look into all at once. There's 40 South Old Road properties or something like that on this list and see all those at one yeah, time. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Maybe not that many. All right, so so what you propose is given these two lists, mm -hmm. for the next meeting, you would remove the ones in pink, which are owned by the water district, mm -hmm. which we won't, can't touch. And you're suggesting that we start looking at the ones that you've highlighted in green, mm -hmm. because they appear to be possibly marketable parcels mm -hmm. that could conceivably be sold and go back on the tax rolls. I think so. Okay. I, you know, I don't know what you all think. Do you, I, to me, that sounds like a good place to start because you're you're narrowing down what you're looking at. Right. You know, you're getting rid of the water district's parcels because you can't do anything with those. Mm -hmm. And if we recommend, if we take the ones that have frontage and then are conforming lots or potentially conforming lots, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If we wanted to take those as a cluster or group and make a recommendation, depending on what your thoughts are, mm -hmm. that would take those out of the equation, and then we're we're left with you know narrowing it down. Right. So what what do you, what do you all think? I think it's a very good idea. Sounds good. Look for that. I think that, yeah, that's a good way to start this process, and then we can adjust it if necessary. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm impressed with the amount of open space that we have. And I know. It's more than you think. Well, it is. And, and I think that part of it, from the con, from it, within the context of open space, we need to consider, is it something that can be further used as open space like you know is it worth to put a, a parking lot in the Gilbert Stockwell properties is it is that the type of thing that would make sense for our community to make these that area more useful I, I, I'm gonna assume here that it wasn't given to the town because they were great buildable lots but 
from what I've gathered, there is some potential there for some for some usable or non-used open space. But it would be nice to be able to have people go there. You know, that's that's part of even my frustration with South Old Road is that people can't really get there right now. It's not a workable, functioning place yet. So I think we need to, you know, go look at these things in a thorough manner. But I'm I'm absolutely willing to start that way. That's fine. And as Mr. Benoit pointed out, you know, we'll make sure that we can get ourselves booked into the planning board room yep. for the next meeting, and that way we'll be able to utilize the software that's available over there, so we can pull up screen, we can pull up parcel by parcel right. to look at it more closely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard because this room doesn't have that. It doesn't. We don't have that capability in here, correct? No. So. Well, we could with a projector and a laptop, but. But it's yeah. It's, you'll be looking at the. It's kind of, it's not easy to do yeah. in here. So I think that that's the plan, is to make sure we can book ourselves for the, on the 21st of September, we'll make sure we get that room. You know, and maybe we should just go ahead, and not that the meetings have to be posted, but I understand that the town clerk now reserves the meeting space, so if we made sure that on the first and third Mondays of the month, mm -hmm. that that planning board meeting room was always reserved for us, so that we could utilize that software. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, I'm sure that the audience can tell you it's really hard to hear up here. Even when the air conditioner's on, even from you know you talking to me is difficult, and um, that's a very frustrating thing in a group that really has to work together. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, I know for the selectmen's meetings I go to and stuff, sometimes you can't hear anything out there. Right. Unfortunately, technology has not caught up with this room. You know, and sometimes the air conditioner is an issue in the planning board room, too, but, you know, we're getting into the fall months yeah, now, right. so, so yeah. it shouldn't be so much of a problem. All right, well, if, if you all agree that that's a reasonable way to proceed, then um, I think that that, you know, it makes, it makes sense to me. And like you said, the Gilbert Stockwell property is... Matt pointed out, it you know it was given for conservation years ago, and it pro it does have a conservation restriction on it. Does on the deeds. But that can be, Madam Chair, uh, that could be explored to see if more uh, if other passive recreation uses are permissible. Right, and I think you know I yeah I think we need to find out more information because I don't know maybe we have to go to the conservation commission and get their blessing. That's I don't correct. Know. We would for that parcel. So um, we'll have to make sure that our Conservation Commission representative here can assist us. All right, so does anyone have anything, for, you know, right now, I mean, I think we've got a, we've got a plan of attack, I think. Um, we know that we'll be able to have the planning board meeting room on the 21st, so we can get that, you know, we can proceed with that. And I think the small parcels is kind of, you know, in here too. Um, those are really tough. I'll show some examples next meeting, but we'll soon well, see why. A couple here. Yeah, we'll soon see why they're trivial to our uh, right. examination. But if, if what you showed us tonight, I mean that these little triangles of space and stuff, they're not marketable. They're not. It's just it's a good place for trees to you know to grow, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. And we're um, to any other to, expectations yeah. is probably ridiculous. Right. You know, and there may be something that comes to our attention that maybe is a, a small parcel, tiny, non-conforming, that happens to be next door to someone who owns you know, a house lot or something, and maybe they would be interested in acquiring mm -hmm. Right, And that. as Mark and I were discussing before the meeting started, uh, this could be an intern uh, project for someone to help us That's do the A&R procedure yep. to transfer these over to other adjacent homeowners. But some of them, are, <laughs> you got to see them. They're just irregular triangles on the border of a road in between the road and a pond and it, <laughs> they don't make any sense so uh, I'll, show, I'll show some examples okay so we'll do so we'll have some examples of those tiny ones mm -hmm. next meeting okay all right so then we'll that's what we'll do with that 60 I think we've got enough to chew on here without worrying about 61 and 61a parcels right now 
I unfortunately did not get to those. I was right. working for, on um, this one. Those are all privately. Those would all be privately owned parcels, anyways. I mean, that's going to be a long range. Yes. Project in and of itself. Agreed, and we have a study going through CMRPC for some of those already. And when that's finished, providing the results, this committee would be beneficial for us trying to decide how to proceed our examination of those. Okay. But in the meantime. Uh, my recommendation to focus on the town on once for now and that will take some time going through these oh, yeah. at our meetings so do you so. know um, do you know when it's expected that CMRPC will finish we did an adjustment to add more market study to the, the initial assessment so okay. uh, they're working on that now with some additional was it LPA hours that they'll and they'll give us a draft we'll submit comments but it should come back it, at least it has to come back before the end of the year I just don't, oh, have a, okay. I don't have an exact timeline. Before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah, that could be a very beneficial tool yes. um, for us yeah. as we're looking at those properties, obviously. Mm -hmm. It could be a good blueprint for the ones it examines for applying that blueprint to the others. Right. So. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so that sounds like a plan. Now, the open space plan, are you, gen you gentlemen are still you're working on the um, add-ons, the adjustments? Yes, unfortunately, uh, we didn't make any progress since our last meeting, so I don't have any updates today. Okay. Well, I just said if any. You know, I didn't know. You, st you, st you don't have a time frame for that, correct, you said? Nope, it just... Well, as soon as possible, so our open space plan becomes active yep. for its seven-year duration. Okay. All right. Um, is there any public comment tonight? No, there is not. Okay. Um, let's see. So our next meeting we're going to have on the 21st. Um, it doesn't seem like 6 o'clock was really a, a, a good thing here tonight. So... What do you think about a 6.30 as a compromise? Personally, I don't have a problem with 6 as long as I remember it. <laughs> and that's just my own failure, you know? Um, but if 6.30 works, that's fine either way. I, from what I've heard, I think it's difficult for some people to get here for 6. I would make a motion that we try 6.30 next meeting and see how that works. Is there a second on that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's a vote. Okay, so we'll try September 21 at 6.30 and see if that's good. And that way it's still before 7 o'clock, so Eric can be here. Um, all right, so we'll do that. Now, the minutes of uh, the last meeting, did you all have an opportunity to look at them? I have to admit that I did not. I apologize. I did not print those out, but I know we did sure. circulate them. <laughs> I, I have uh, looked at them briefly, but I have not All right. printed out the hard copy to All right. I did print a copy, but it's not a very good copy. And there's only one, so do you want... I'll put them on for the next agenda, but I don't want, to, I don't want us to get Behind. backed up on minutes. So, you know, it, we were, we were really backed up the last time with six sets, and I, mm -hmm. I just didn't want to, I'm trying to avoid having that happen. So we'll put those on, I'll put on the last meeting, you know, for next next time. If Madam we can please. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, sir. I'm sorry. It's okay. Just to uh, let the committee know, I did stamp in all other six sets of minutes, and those are recorded okay. with the town clerk's office. So we're up to date with what we owe her. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, and we don't have any correspondence. Um, Aren't you? Yes, sir. Uh, Mac, you us know? When, do you know when you're going to do a site visit with the conservation at the uh, uh, South Hall Road pro uh, piece? Not yet. I waited as long as I could to find out when they wanted to schedule that, but it finds out that Labor Day weekend they didn't want to, and the following meeting they had some commitments or prior commitments, so they didn't set a date. Yeah, you're trying to set up a you're trying to set up a site visit with conservation. Yeah, for the it's walking road, really? for the walking trail. Yeah, yeah. I want to show them the trails. We have some spots in the trails that are a little worrisome 
whether or not there's some grade or one of the trails goes right down what was probably a washout area. Uh, I just want to be able to show these to the commission, see if we could file an RDA instead of an NOI for certain areas, and then we could focus our engineer survey on the connection to the 61A land from Pappas. So a couple things I want to show them before filing an RDA and just didn't set a date yet, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll explore that next meeting, I believe, was the, okay. That's what I thought. Is some of your, is some of the trails actually crossing or in a wetland? Some of the ones that, towards the connection piece. It's, they're all dry now, but it's very, very likely that those are registered wetlands. They're not exact trails oh, yet, okay. but this is an area that's being surveyed, delineated, X, Y, Z, and that's gonna be an NOI no matter what. Mm -hmm. And those aren't the areas that I'm looking at with the commission okay. yet. We, we, that area, we already went out with a surveyor, Waterman Design, uh, I said, you're gonna have to focus on this spot. So we already know that. But some of the other spots in the upland areas, we're curious if we could circumvent that with an RDA. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but did you have Brian Waterman out there? No. No? You had just the engineer survey? Yes. The preliminary site visit. They're not gonna do their survey until uh, the leaves fall. Okay, just curious. Yeah. Anything else? I hope I answered your question. Unfortunately, I don't have a date yet. Next meeting, Mark, I should know okay. when that is. Thank you. Yep. Does anyone else have um, any no. comment or question to add? I think most to adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Okay, thank you very much.